In this video, I want to give a brief description of the differences between the three outlooks on the Great Tribulation period. Among Bible-believing people, there are three views on the Great Tribulation period on just how it should be fulfilled. And for this video, I want to use the illustration from Daniel 2. If you haven't seen my video on Daniel 2, I recommend you watch that. And in that video, I use this depiction of Nebuchadnezzar's image turned on its side to represent the flow of a timeline. And in that video, I explain that the purpose of the vision is to set forth the kingdoms of men that will then be followed by the kingdom of God. And the feet in the image, the feet of mixed iron and clay that you see shaded in red there, that is the great tribulation period in Daniel's prophecies. And we find this in Daniel 2 and Daniel 7 and Daniel 9, and Daniel chapters 11 and 12, and so forth. But in Daniel 2, that period known as the Great Tribulation is represented by the feet of the image. So this is the area we are going to focus on in this video. Now, furthermore, what you see represented in green here all views agree this much was fulfilled. And that would be up to the point in the Roman Empire, the legs of iron, the point at the time of Christ's ministry in the first century, but before the Roman Empire transitioned into this feet and toes of mixed iron and clay. So up to that point, all views agree this has been fulfilled. And something interesting about this is even critics will agree that this much has been fulfilled. And we see this argument as early as Porphyry, a Greek philosopher, and we see the argument carried forth today by a lot of liberal critics. And the view is a little more involved than what you see represented on the screen. And I plan on making videos in the future about Porphyry's understanding of Daniel. But the basic idea is that uh, the first part of the prophecy is accurate and fulfilled, right? And they would say it was written at that point, and the remaining part never was fulfilled and never will be. So that's how even unbelievers can look at the book of Daniel. But what's interesting really is that all views agree this much of the prophecy has been fulfilled. From this point then, we need to examine how Christians understand the remaining part there, which is the Great Tribulation, how it is to be fulfilled. That's the issue that comes into play between these three different views, futurism, historicism, and preterism. The first of these views I want to look at is futurism. And this is the oldest view. And they understand that everything was fulfilled up to the point we discussed, but what remains the feet and toes of mixed iron and clay from Daniel 2 represented here, and any related Great Tribulation prophecy. It hangs in the future and will be unfilled at any time. You're to be ready for it to occur at any time. It will be a brief period. It will be fulfilled literally in the same pattern as the first part of Daniel has been fulfilled, so also this final part will eventually be fulfilled. This is the view then held today by dispensational premillennialists. And being that we are so far from the first century today and can look back and understand better what's going on, 
we see that the reason that this whole large intervening era is taking place is because it is the era we are in now, the church age. And in the systematized form, this also is why it is believed that the rapture of living and dead believers to meet the Lord in the air will occur before the day of the Lord, as the Apostle Paul teaches in First and Second Thessalonians. But that is the systematized view of today. The simple way of looking at it, as you see here on your screen, the futurist view. And this would be represented by early men such as we find in the Epistle of Barnabas and the Didache and we find it in Justin Martyr and Irenaeus and Hippolytus and we find it in any of the early Kilius who were teaching imminency. So we have Ignatius and Clement of Rome and others to add to that list. They would have held this futurist understanding of the Great Tribulation. The next view I want to look at is the historicist view, historicism. And this view came about during Reformation times, and they basically look at it as follows. There has been an ongoing and continuous fulfillment from the first century through to today, and the Apocalypse and portions of Daniel have been slowly and progressively fulfilled throughout this entire time. So if you would look at what they believe to be fulfilled and shaded in green, it would look something like this. We would be coming toward the end of the time of the feet of mixed iron and clay, and they would say this ongoing tyrannical Roman entity who is persecuting the church with its antichrist figure and so forth is the Roman Catholic Church with her papacy and so forth. And this view was held by some very important men such as this gentleman and this gentleman, and this is why people have a lot of respect for this view today. And the third view is preterism. And this view suggests that all things have been fulfilled. It depends on what degree you take preterism to. However, um, if you apply it consistently, then all things have been fulfilled. If you want to remain within creedal orthodoxy, however, then you will retain an actual return of the Lord from heaven and bodily resurrection for judgment sometime in the future. You'll have to retain those doctrines. But that is enough for them to teach that the Great Tribulation was fulfilled already and a coming of the Lord in judgment, his imminent coming, was fulfilled. And this was fulfilled, of course, at the events surrounding the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70. Now, I have represented their fulfilled feet with pink bunnies because Apparently, the Great Tribulation was fulfilled without any of the early church noticing it. <laughs> so, to recap, all views believe this much of Daniel has been fulfilled. You have Futurism, who believes the final part will be fulfilled in the future. You have Historicism, which believes in an ongoing progressive fulfillment throughout the entire church age. And you have preterism with its invisible fulfillments in the spirit realm that none of the church noticed. So there's the views for you. I hope that clears everything up. 
Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time.